have many friends who are people of color and of other marginalized identities, and they're liberty activists as well. And what they have happened to them is people uh, who are of the same identity say, you're not a real whatever identity they are, or dismiss, uh, or dismiss them saying that uh, they uh, hate their, their own group and all of that. So I was wondering how, maybe if you all have had the experience, how you deal with that personally and how you deal with the people who antagonize you. I've actually dealt with that in the opposite. Um, the, the Muslims, most of the Muslims that I deal with, they acknowledge that my arguments on an academic level are sound, that I am correct, and that the majority of modern scholars agree with me. It's the people at this at, at events like this that actually accuse me of not being true to who I am. Um, I've been cussed out probably three times a day since I got here by people who are, you know, attendees at this convention who are absolutely pissed off and outraged at the fact that I'm Muslim and I'm here. And all of them who have done so have told me to my face, you are not Muslim. You are not a part of your faith. You are not who you say you are. So I have dealt with that from my own community. I've actually dealt with it from old white men, just to be honest, uh, old white people telling me uh, about myself rather than me, you know, a person with a master's degree in Islamic jurisprudence and Islamic studies, telling them about it. <laughs> Instead, they read a website, and now they're going to tell me. Didn't he deport you all already? Uh, not yet. I was born here. You can deport me back to Eastern Appalachia if you want. Yeah. Kentucky's ready when you are. Well, um, just a quick comment. Huh? I, I try to explain that the ideas of liberty are the same for everybody. Uh, and. Um, and that they are valid for everybody. So um, I, I defend that I am Hispanic, Latino to my friends and try to convince them that I am and that the ideas I believe in are also valid for them. Do we have any other um, questions? I'd like to talk one more. Yes, sir. Uh, I got here a couple minutes late, so I apologize for that. But uh, I, And I don't remember everybody's name, but the, the Muslim gentleman, he just said the angry white men that are I, I'm, a, I'm an older white guy, but I'm not angry, and I'm not angry at you. But my question regarding liberty amongst, what kind of reception do you get amongst your fellow Muslims? Because I can tell you from, from the perspective that I get from what I read and from the media, and I consider myself a conservatarian, conservative, libertarian, term I picked up here last year. But in any event, the, the Islamic jihad problem, whatever, you want, whatever term you want to use about it, uh, which is a separate issue. But there are people who believe that the perpetrators of that terror are fulfilling what they believe is the correct definition of their faith. Obviously, there's plenty of people who disagree with that, think it's a perverted interpretation. Okay, and That's a separate issue as well. What, what my question for you is, how is the liberty agenda, your liberty message received amongst your fellow Muslims, given that perception of how the jihad is either fulfillment of legitimate Islam or not? What, what kind of reception are you getting? Well, uh, Muslims for Liberty, we've, uh, we've existed for about six years. And in that time, our two largest markets are America and Pakistan. Uh, in the course of, uh, of, of our existence, uh, we influenced a populist candidate in Pakistan in 2012. He had a libertarian message. Uh, get the government out of the way. That was his main uh, slogan. For was get the government out of the way, get the foreign banks, give the uh, power of Pakistan's economy back to Pakistan. In that time, uh, the first libertarian party in Pakistan has been set up. Last year, the first libertarian think tank in Pakistan was set up. Two years before that, uh, 20,000 Turks took over a park in Turkey in protest of restriction of free speech rights by the government there. 81% of those who were polled self-identified as libertarians. So that means that this, the largest conservative libertarian event of the country, has uh, what, about a third of how many libertarians they were able to get together in Turkey. Um, we have, uh, I have libertarian efforts going on in Bangladesh. You have a thriving economic civil disobedience movement in Malaysia and in Indonesia. 
So I say that it's working. I mean, like I said, we bring the most renowned and contemporary Islamic scholarly on my international radio show, and we discuss libertarian philosophy with them, and they back me up. Five years ago, nobody was talking about these issues before I decided that somebody should. You know, I basically decided no one else was getting up and no one was taking a microphone and talking about these things, so I did. And in doing so, I was able to influence the conversation within the community. Now if you go to an event like RISC, which is it's a big Islamic conference, like twice the size of this one, like 10, six, six to 10,000 people, depending on the year, and the scholars are talking about free trade in their, uh, in their presentations. Uh, you have uh, uh, Yasser Qadhi talking about natural rights being a central part of Islamic jurisprudence. You know, so we were able to influence the conversation because before no one was really curious about it because nobody was talking about it. But then I went out and I beat the drum really hard and I screamed and waved my arms around until someone was willing to look at me. And then I said the message and it got into people's heads. And then the other big name scholars, they had no choice but to follow suit. Is the younger generation, the millennials and such, are they more yes. receptive as a group? Much, much more. Uh, the problem is that you have, here, at least overseas they are. Here in America, no. And the reason is because these are kids that grew up in a post-9-11 world, and their world's dichotomy is uh, left, won't try to kill us and lock us in camps, everything on the right, including libertarians, because Clint Beck calls himself one, wants to kill us and throw us all in Guantanamo. And that's the reality, that's the world view that they have growing up in a post 9-11 world, is that the left may blow us up overseas, but they're not trying to, get to throw us in camps here. And they see Donald Trump as a personification of this desire to round up the Muslims and get rid of us all. And from my experience, there is there, there is quite a bit of that feeling on the right, and you know that is a huge wall here in America for me to be able to reach my own community here. Pakistan, it's easy. Saudi, Qatar, uh, Bangladesh, these people live in oppression, so a message of liberty is easy to sell to them. But people that live here, that their, their fear is if they embrace liberty, they will lose their freedom, they will lose their businesses, is a huge hurdle for me to get over. And every single time uh, Ben Carson says we should get rid of the Muslims because they're all liars, and then his poll numbers jump 12%, or Trump says, oh, we should end all Muslim immigration, you know, tell my kids that their grandparents can't come here from Canada to see them because they're Muslim and his numbers go up 20%, it makes my job five times harder. <laughs> Taking one last quick question. 